This is the ninth video supplement for CIS 351, Grand Valley State University's course on computer organization and assembly language. This video covers Boolean expressions. So a Boolean expression is an algebraic expression, a sequence of variables and operators, that describes a circuit. The key to understanding Boolean expressions, of course, is to know what the symbols mean. So for starters, the overline means not. Next, the plus means or. Now it may seem strange at first to equate a plus with or, but let's think about addition for a second. What numbers are special with respect to addition? Well, zero. Zero is what we call the additive identity, which means that when you add zero, the value doesn't change. Or more formally, for all numbers x, x plus zero equals x. With that in mind, here's the truth table for or. Now let's replace true and false with 0 and 1. We can see that in this version of the truth table, 0 or false acts like the additive identity. x or false is always x. Just as putting a 0 in an addition expression doesn't change the output, putting a false into an or expression doesn't change the output. Okay, now, as you might have guessed, the dot means and. And yes, this is the same dot you might use in an algebra course to indicate multiplication. So, to see why we equate AND with multiplication, let's again ask what numbers are special with respect to multiplication. This time, both 0 and 1 have special properties. So, analogous to 0 for addition, 1 is the multiplicative identity. That is, the number that doesn't change the output. Another way of saying this, of course, is that x AND true is x just like x times 1 is always x. When we look at the truth table for AND using zeros and ones, we see that this identity also applies for AND. With multiplication, zero has its own property where zero times anything is always zero. And we can see that this property holds in the truth table for AND as well. Or in other words, x and false is always false. Bear with me for a minute while I get on a soapbox. Think back to some of your middle school and high school math classes. Did you ever get irritated when the teacher would make you learn names for things that just didn't seem to need names, like additive identity or additive inverse and stuff like that? Did you ever think, just tell me what I need to know to get the right answer? Or perhaps you were annoyed just now when I'm drawing all of these analogies instead of just saying or is plus and and is multiplication. Well, I can certainly understand the frustration back in middle and high school if you were told to memorize stuff like identity properties without having any idea of how it might be useful. That's why I took the time in this video to show how those seemingly unrelated topics are really related. The benefit of the relationship between algebra and a Boolean expression might not be immediately obvious, but the reality is that many of the great ideas that have made people millions of dollars think startups in Silicon Valley and stuff, are not really completely new ideas, but oftentimes are just applications of old ideas to a new area. So with that in mind, one of the things you want to do as you work through the computer science curriculum is to watch for and learn about the patterns that underlie and connect the different aspects of computer science. Not only will it make it easier to learn new ideas, because then you can relate the new thing you're learning to an existing mental model instead of trying to just treat it as plain rote memorization. But being able to recognize those fundamental patterns may also help you be the one to come up with the next brilliant solution to a tough problem. You know, if you're working at a big company and you're trying to advance your career, it helps to be known as the one who's coming up with the out-of-the-box ideas as opposed to the one who's just sitting there coding up whatever you're told to code up. And contrary to how things may look in the movies, those brilliant ideas, whether they be innovations at work or the next million dollar startup, don't really tend to appear out of thin air. They come from people who have learned to see the bigger picture and learn to leverage connections that lie under the surface. Just as this idea of additive identities kind of quietly lies under the surface in both algebra, like eighth grade algebra, and this 300 level computer science course. So keep this idea in mind the next time you're frustrated by a class like, let's say, Math 225 or Math 325, or perhaps even a CS course that gets into more theory than you were expecting. 
All right, okay, it's time for me to get off my soapbox. But on the off chance that you're wondering what else is related to identities, consider taking an abstract algebra course like Math 350. There's some really cool ideas in there, even if it's not immediately obvious how you would use them. And notice that the book on the right has a circuit diagram on the front. I haven't read this particular book, and now I'm kind of curious how circuits are coming up in their abstract algebra class. All right, all right, that, that's enough of a tangent for right now. So let's get back to Boolean expressions. All right, so now that you know what the symbols mean, you can see how the expression relates to the diagram. So in this case, if we work from the inside out, we can see that the NOT gate is applied to the B first, then the output of that NOT gate as well as input A are fed into the AND gate. Now, you'll notice here, of course, that while we're borrowing stuff from algebra, we might as well borrow the rules of precedence. So in this case, the multiplication-like AND operation takes precedence over the addition-like OR operation. All right, and then the last step is to take the output of that AND gate together with input C and send it into the OR gate. Let me mention one other thing that's similar to algebra. It's pretty common to omit the dot and then use what is called multiplication by juxtaposition, which is just a nerdy way of saying that when you stick two things next to each other, you mean multiply. All right, so let's finish up with just a few examples. So here's example one. Pause the video and try to sketch the circuit diagram for this. So here's what I got. Notice that placing the two sets of parens next to each other implies AND. Just another version of that multiplication by juxtaposition, but this time we're not using just single letters, but an expression. Also notice that I used a dot here on the wire coming out of input A to signal that those two wires are connected in contrast to where that wire crosses over the wire from input B. There's no connection there. All right, now try example two. All right, here's one solution. The main difference, of course, is that the entire expression in the rightmost parens is negated, hence the NOT gate after the OR gate. Note that we also could have combined the NOT gate and the OR gate into a single NOR gate. All right, one last example. And by the way, this symbol in the middle means XOR. All right, here's my solution. And in this example, the main thing to pay attention to is the difference between there being separate bars over A and B and there being a single line over the product of A and B. You'll notice in green, when they're separate lines, that means A is negated and B is negated, and then it's fed into the AND gate, whereas when you have that line over the product of A and B, then you're negating the AND, which gives the NAND gate we see here. One last thing. There's a Boolean expression pattern that's so common that it gets a name. It's called a sum of products and looks something like this. If you were to evaluate this from the perspective of a high school algebra student, you would first compute all the products and then add them together. In other words, you're taking a sum of a bunch of products. In the context of a Boolean expression, you might call this an or of ands. One of the reasons this pattern is so common is that it is precisely what you get when you use the big hammer method to generate a circuit directly from a truth table, as we see here in the running example from video one. All right, now let me quickly wrap up by reminding you of what you should be able to do based on this video. First, if I give you a Boolean expression, you should be able to draw the circuit that corresponds to that Boolean expression. Or, in the other direction, if I give you a circuit diagram, you should be able to write out the Boolean expression that describes that circuit. Or, as a third option, I may give you a Boolean expression and just ask you to fill out the truth table that describes how the circuit corresponding to that expression would behave. Finally, I might give you a truth table and ask you to write out the Boolean expression in sum of products form directly from that truth table. Or regardless of the specific problem, just make sure that when you hear the term sum of products, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so once again, thanks for watching and be sure to let me know if you have any questions.